Hi, I'm Chiro from Coherence, and in this video we're going to have an overview of one of our sample projects. In this very small project, there's a simulator that interacts with clients. The clients can click on the map and they request movement of a character to the simulator. The simulator executes the movement completely on its own side using the nav mesh, and then it synchronizes back to the clients the position and the rotation and the animation of that character. Let's dive right in. The first thing I want to do here is I want to run the game to show you how it looks. In order to do so, when I open the project, I want to ensure that I have baked the netcode. Now, I know this is baked because I can see here the icon that shows like a green tick. Uh, but if not for you, uh, you will go to coherence bake and that will launch a bake. And then you can, at this point, launch a local replication server for words. When I do that, the local replication server starts in the terminal and is now running. And now I can connect to it. To launch this game and to launch the simulator, I'm going to use Unity's um, multiplayer play mode, which I have configured previously, uh, and I've created a few play mode scenarios here. I'm going to use the one simulator plus one client. And if you want to configure multiplayer play mode, we have a video on our channel on how to do that. I press play. And Unity will basically start the game in this editor and then launch another local editor uh, that represents another client and then also launch a build of the simulator. The simulator, however, it's important to understand that we're not seeing it. It's a process that's running on our machine, but is not uh, visible to us. So make no mistake, it's running. But again, uh, here we're only looking at two clients rather than um, none of them is the simulator, basically. So client two, client one. And then you can see from the console that the simulator has actually connected. If we scroll to the bottom, it says connection successful. So the simulator is sending console logs to the console in this editor. So now that the simulator is connected, I can click on one of the clients and connect. And when I do so, I get a character. Uh, but this character is not something that I have created here locally on the client. And in fact, you will notice that um, the character clone is a remote entity. You can see it from the empty icon here. So the way this works is that I am connecting, the simulator sees me and spawns a character for me, the client. And now I can move this character by clicking on the map. My client sends a request to the simulator, the simulator elaborates the request and then moves the character using nav mesh and synchronizes back the position, the rotation and the animation of this character. And you can notice that if I go to the coherence bridge, the coherence bridge shows that the client connection has two of them. One is the simulator and one is my client. Now, if I go to the other Unity instance and I connect as well, I get a character and I can move. And you will notice here in the background, the character is actually moving. So same process here. I connected, I get a character for myself. The simulator then creates and takes over that character. And I can then ask the simulator to move the character for me. you will see in the bridge that now there's two client connections because the other client is connected. So that's pretty much the way the game works. And now let's look at the behind the scenes and see how this is actually set up. When you open the project, you can start exploring and you can see that the whole game is actually contained in one scene called main, which you can find here. All the scripts are here, so there's only four. We're going to explore them later. And when we look at the main scene, the first two objects, they represent environment and like camera, lighting, post-processing. Then we have one of the samples that Coherence provides for UIs, the work connection dialog, which you can see here. That you can find by going to explore samples. Uh, the event system to interact with it. And then the Coherence bridge, which of course is our network manager. It's always necessary to have in the scene. Live query, also a necessary object set to zero, so endless. Uh, and then auto simulator connection, which is an object and a script that allows the simulator to automatically connect to the replication server. Finally, we have the player. The player is not a network entity. You will notice there's no coherent sync. So it's an offline object, but what it's doing is looking for a network entity that represents the simulator and it's sending network commands over it. Also, it sends the network commands when I click around uh, in the scenery. So it does the ray casting, finds the position, and then sends a network command to the simulator requesting the player to move there. 
All of the rest of the work is done by the simulator itself, as I was saying in the beginning. To understand what's the flow that happens in the game, we need to start from the coherence bridge. On the coherence bridge, we can notice that under client connections, which are enabled, the simulator has a prefab that will be spawned when the simulator connects. So this prefab, if we trace down the uh, original prefab, it's basically the one we were looking at. It's a very simple prefab. It has nothing else than a script. And this script really represents the brain of the simulator. So when the simulator connects, it spawns an instance of this prefab, and then this thing will be responsible for spawning characters and for moving them. Spawning characters, you can see here there's a reference to a prefab. This is going to represent the player character. And this one also is a network entity. So if we go to it, you'll notice there's a coherent sync. Uh, this is the one we see moving. And of course, uh, if we configure, you will notice that there's a bunch of variables that have been synchronized. So position, rotation, these are the ones that the simulator changes remotely. And then the players, they see them as a result. So they see the player moving. Again, starting from the bridge, simulator connects, this prefab gets spawned, it gets spawned into don't destroy on load, and then the simulator looks at the, at the client connections, and when it finds a client, it spawns, it spawns a character prefab for that player, and it puts it in a list. And actually, we can take a quick look at that logic if we just go to the simulator script. So these are the four scripts that I was mentioning before. Here, obviously, we have gated everything under the coherence simulator if define. Uh, so I'm going to do like a little trick here and add Unity Editor so we can see the code colored. But obviously, we don't want this to be like this during the execution, so I'm going to remove it later. Now that we see it, we can notice that the simulator script, what it's doing is on enable is listening to the client connections on synced, on created, on destroyed events. And when, for example, a client connection is created, the simulator attempts to create a character. So what it does is it looks at the client connection that was just established, it filters out itself, and then if the code gets to here, it spawns a character, and then it adds that character to a, a dictionary of characters. So so the simulator just keeps track of which client ID owns which character. And, and basically it has prepared the character, it instantiates, and then uh, the clients, they see the character pop up in their hierarchy, of course, because coherence synchronizes the, the prefab. Once that's done, the client is basically ready to start interacting. So when I click around this script here, the player, if you go to the player, you can see that there's a uh, update, get mouse button, raycast, and then request move. Request move then looks at the um, simulator sync. So the simulator sync basically represents this prefab here, the simulator, which we find here in uh, on live query synced. So if you know what on live query synced does. This happens when the client is ready and synced. Uh, so if I connect as a client, eventually, like after one second or something, I receive this event and now I see the, the simulator object, which has already connected before me, um, and I just store a reference to it. So later, when I do the raycast, I can request that simulator object to move the player by sending a command to it. So you see that here in the request move to, I use that previous reference that I found before, and then I invoke a command to the simulator script, and I request two methods depending on whether I'm clicking in an open space or I'm clicking on an object. Uh, in an open space would be like this, move character to. I send it to authority only because I just want to send it to the simulator, which is the authority of this network entity. And then I pass the client ID my client ID and the desired position, which is a vector three. So this move character two, if we go back to the simulator script, you'll find it here. Uh, and this does nothing else than communicate with the character prefab and invoke a function called move to. So if we go to the character prefab, the character prefab is a basically just like a 
it revolves all around the NavMesh agent, so to speak. Um, and so the move to method is here. Uh, this is only on the simulator, so you see that only the simulator can actually invoke movement. And again, if we do the Unity Editor thing, you will see that this method here, which is invoked by the simulator as a response to the network command, will instruct the NavMesh agent to move to a certain position and instruct an animator to play a certain animation. And then because the character prefab has position, rotation, scale and animation synchronized, the client will see it move. There's really not much else to it. I mean, you're free to explore the scripts, but just as a recap, the idea is as a client, I connect, I find in my player script, I find the on live query sync, I find the simulator object and store it. And then when I click somewhere, I send a command to the simulator. The simulator on its end has spawned a character for me when I connected, so this method here. And then when I send a network command to it, which is one of these two, it takes my character and it instructs it to, um, to move to a certain position. And then I see the character moving as a result of the synchronization. So let's take a look at the game again in motion and we can tie up this uh, demonstration. Take another look at the game. I'm going to use a different play mode scenario this time. I'm just going to launch one client. So I select this one and I press play. And Unity is again creating the simulator and running it in the background as a process and then is launching this particular editor as a client. So this time we're gonna, there's going to be only one client and the simulator. The simulator is now running. You can see from the console that it connected. And then I connect myself. And again, now the flow starts, right? So right now we are disconnected. I press connect. And I find the simulator prefab because the simulator is already connected. So it has instanced it for itself, instantiated it. I can see that the client connections are there. And then as soon as I connect, the simulator sees me as a client and spawns a character for me. So you see the character is remote. And now I can press the mouse button, click somewhere, recast. My player script sends a message to the simulator uh, network entity. The simulator receives it. So again, here, receives the network message and instructs the character to move and then the character finds via navmesh the path moves on the simulator and synchronizes back to me position rotation and animation and you can see that if i click on an interactive object the character at the end of the movement it will play a different animation that's why we have these two different network commands and that's pretty much it that concludes our demonstration. This is obviously one way to do things. Coherence supports many types of topology, and this is just one of them. As I said in the beginning, uh, you can also mix different models. So one way you have a simulator, but you're still having some kind of uh, shared distributed authority all in the same game. Uh, so again, this is one type of project. Uh, we're going to cover more in subsequent videos. So see you in the next one.